All right, our next speaker is Edmund Neo, and Edmund is Permune's Immunology Sales Manager based in Singapore, representing the company in the Asia Pacific region. Edmund graduated from the National University of Singapore and worked with Abbott Laboratories researching on the impact of mineral fortification on the aggregation of dairy proteins before joining Promune in 2019. He's played a pivotal role in the team supporting customers in both academia and corporate spaces across his region to achieve their research objectives. And he'll be talking to us today about application of ProPresent antigen presentation assay to assess immunogenicity. Evan? Right, thanks for the great introduction, Emily. Also, thank you, um, Yunjun and Peng, for um, those great talks as well, and looking forward to the rest of the talks today as well. So I'm really excited to have this um, opportunity to be here, seeing you know experts from all around the world gathered together here, and to have the chance, you know, really learning from one another. And it's really a rare opportunity um, to have this um, chance and space to actually do so. So just to um, introduce myself again, so my name is Edmund Neo, and I'm today I'll be giving a talk on the application of ProPresent antigen presentation assay to characterize immune responses. So before diving straight to discuss about our ProPresent antigen presentation assay, I would like to give a brief introduction about an overview of our company's capabilities of products and services that can allow you to characterize immune responses. I believe that most of us here can appreciate that, you know, characterizing immune responses can be quite a daunting process without having reliable tools and technology. So this is where ProImmune utilizes more than 20 years of our experiences and expertise offering a range of in vitro assays, ranging from antigen presentation, MHC peptide binding, functional T cell proliferation, and cytokine release assay. So apart from our specialist assays, ProImmune can also offer MHC multimer staining reagents for the class one, class two, CD1B, and MR1. So however, due to the time limit that we have here today, so I will just be only talking about our ProPresent antigen presentation in um, detail and also share success stories um, of groups that we have worked with before. And of course, this information all can be found in the public domain. So if you're interested to learn more about our products and services that are listed here, feel free to get in touch with us and our respective team members is more than happy to have a chat with you and to explore how we can really help in your research program moving along. So first of all, right, so cells are required to perform this series of cellular-based assay, um, be it the T-cell assay, DCT cell assay, or even the ProPresent MAPS assay. So in ProImmune, we have a biobank storing isolated PBMCs from healthy donors that has a broad ethnic distribution representing global population. They are HLA type and they are credit preserved, ready to be go and used in these assays. So ProPresent antigen presentation, also commonly known as MAPS, is used to identify naturally processed and presented epitopes from protein of interest to address drug mode of action, evaluate the impact of protein modification, and identify antigen target for vaccines and immune therapies. We can offer both MHC class 1 or 2 analyzing multiple test articles and report to you in a very rapid turnaround time in just 4 to 6 weeks. Here you may find some publication examples that have cited using ProPresent, and we have tested a variety of materials ranging from therapeutic antibodies, blood factors, gene therapy vectors, infectious disease, oncolytic viruses, food proteins, and just to list, and these are some of the examples only. So ProPresent can be used to test a variety of cell, antigen source, and delivery vehicle. We can fit to your detection options of your choice to focus on sequences such as mutated sequences or modified peptides that you would like to search from the mass spec database. In general, there are two main steps that can be separated. So for the first step of the assay, is the generation of the MHC presenting cells, such as loading of exogenous protein into dendritic cells or transfecting cell samples with a viral vector, just, just to name some examples here. So in the second step, once we have the MHC presenting cells, then what we will do is that we will perform an immunoprecipitation and we will be done to recover MHC and peptide followed by doing an analysis using the tandem liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy, um, mass, um, tandem LCM SMS yeah, in short. So in this pro present schematic diagram shows the loading of protein in monocyte derived dendritic cells followed by purification. So let's say if you are interested to identify presented antigens from an exogenous protein, 
We can load your protein into our monocyte-derived dendritic cells from healthy donors, allowing to naturally process and present antigen through the context of MHC. This is then followed by immunoprecipitation to pull down the antigen peptides that are loaded on the MHC, then analyzed by a tandem LC-MSMS. To identify presented peptide sequences, which will then be reported. In most cases, this will be focused more on characterizing MHC class 2 antigen presentation, as we know that the cross-presentation to class 1 is not as efficient through this pathway. So here is the first case study that is published by a group in Pfizer that have deployed our ProPresent assay as part of characterizing immunogenicity of their anti-IL-31 receptor, which is a fully human therapeutic monoclonal antibody, ATR107. In the clinical phase 1 trial, they observed ADA in 76% of healthy subjects. So they decided to investigate the underlying reason that have caused this high level of ADA by identifying potential T cell epitope content since this is one of the key driver leading to the ADA production. In the data generated by our ProPresent MAPS assay, a dominant T cell epitope derived from the CDR2 light chain was identified, which was confirmed by performing functional CD4 T cell proliferation assay. So in the figure below, you can see that the region that was identified by ProPresent assay it has the overlaying of all donors as well as looking at individual donor itself. And we can see that the peptides has been repeatedly identified from the CDR2 in multiple donors. And if you do, a, and what they have done is that they did a further analysis to their in silico prediction. So it was observed that the in silico seems to be inaccurate, thus this clearly shows the benefit of using um, MAPS assay, such as um, yeah, in this case, to identify naturally processed and present the peptides, instead of only simply relying on in silico, which can potentially lead to bad decision for their program. So in this next case study is about this um, vetrotor called alpha, which is an engineered factor 7A analog to treat hemophilia patients. The native recombinant factor 7A has been used to treat hemophilia for more than 20 years with no reports of clinical immunogenicity. So the team in Novo Nordis, they decided to engineer the native sequence by introducing three amino acid substitution to increase the enzymatic activity retaining 99% homology of the native sequence. So at this point, the team in Novo Nordis, you know, they, um, they just think that, okay, that, that was not considered as, um, as a high risk, so they, you know, it was low risk, and they decided to move on into the clinical trials. And they, of course, they also get these approval as well. And however, in their clinical phase three trial, ADA inhibitor were observed in some patients. And since this is um, last line of treatment for hemo hemophilia patients, so this is quite serious. So they had to immediately discontinue this late stage drug development, which has already cost them massive amount of time and money. So after the failure of this drug development, the team in Novo Nordis then asked this question of how can they ensure new epitopes are not engineered into and leading to development of ADAs? So Novo Nordis contacted ProImmune and we had a discussion about um, a strategy for post hoc assessment to address this question. So a parallel study of this uh, MAPS assay were performed by both Novo Nordis, the data on the left, and by ProImmune, the data on the right. So here are two key observations that I would like to highlight from this data is that the first is that the presented region between these two parallel studies is consistent. And the second is that this presented region comprises of two out of the three mutated regions, which are at position 296 and 298. However, we cannot conclude that these two mutations have resulted in immunogenicity yet, since the MAPS assay only addresses naturally processed and presented peptides on the context of MHC molecules, but it does not tell us anything about functional T cell response. So then what they did next was that they did a follow-on T-cell proliferation assay um, performed by ProImmune using synthetic peptides that was identified from the MAPS assay. Then we incubated with CFSC labeled PBMC from healthy donors for seven days. So this is where you can see um, on the right-hand side, the bar chart on the here is that the y-axis represents the percentage donor response and the x-axis represents the test peptide with the respective mutated sequences. The blue bar here represents the wild type sequence while the green bar represents the mutant sequence. So here we can clearly see that these mutant peptides that include either 
position 296 or 298 or both together at the same time have nearly two times more percentage responses than the wild type sequence. So with the combination of both the ProPresent and the T-cell proliferation assay, we can conclude that the mutation of position 296 and 298 has resulted in immunogenicity, which led to the failure of drug development. So if we think retrospectively that if immunogenicity assessment were done earlier, let's say during the preclinical phase, better decision can be made for the program, which can potentially mitigate such serious consequence in, in the clinical trial. So here is the next study that was published by the FDA and editors Medicine to characterize immunogenicity risk of CRISPR-Cas9 by utilizing ProPresent assay. There's no doubt that this Nobel winning CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technology opens up great opportunities for treating diseases. However, unwanted immune responses to Cas9, which is of bacterial origin, would have serious implication. So this paper identifies 22 Staphylococcus aureus Cas9 derived peptides that were both presented on MHC class 2, as well as they are capable of stimulating CD4 T cell response. So these 22 peptides associated with the MHC class 2 alleles with cumulative frequency of nearly 70% of the North American population. So on the left bar chart here, you can see that a range of 2 to 10 unique peptide regions were identified from each donor. And a right figure, it shows that the overlay peptides that were identified by MAPS assay, as well as capable of inducing T cell proliferation, highlighted in pink, where about 85% of the presented peptides are capable of inducing T cell proliferation, indicating as a high risk of immunogenicity. So apart from just the context of looking at immunogenicity of therapeutic biologics in, the, in for this case, MAPS assay can also be used to characterize immune responses on our daily consumer product. So the, the failure of inducing oral tolerance may result in food allergy and cow milk protein is the leading cause of food allergy in infants. So for those infants that are high risk of developing allergic disease, hydrolyzed cow milk based infant formulas are recommended. In the figure below, you can see that the allergenicity decrease is observed with decreasing protein chain length from intact protein to partial and extensive hydrosylate formula all the way down to single, single amino acid. So the presentation of T-cell epitopes is a prerequisite to generate regulatory T-cells that can contribute to oral tolerance. So the team from the known nutrition utilizes ProPresent to identify presented beta-lactoglobulin derived peptides from partial hydrosylate formula. So two key sequence groups identified by ProPresent overlap with previously identified region of interest, and they have been confirmed as T-cell epitope by using synthetic peptide. So this study has demonstrated that BLG-derived peptides can be presented by HLA-DR molecules on human dendritic cells when incubated with a specific PHP. So alternatively, instead of us generating the MHC-presenting cells, you can send us your treated cell samples to our UK facility where we will perform just the second step, which is only the purification step to pull down the presented peptides on the MHC molecules followed by analyzing using the tandem LC MSMS. So this group from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia have used the ProPresent to identify AV-derived peptides from hepatocytes transduced with AAV2 vector encoding capsid alone or human factor 9 that was sent to our UK facility as frozen cell pellet. MHC class 1 analysis was then performed to identify potential class 1 restricted T cell epitope as shown in the table below. And follow on, these peptides were then confirmed as T cell epitopes by using our PRO5 MHC class 1 pentamers as shown in the uh, flow plot um, on the bottom right, where the x-axis represents the MHC class 1 pentamer and the y-axis represents the CD8. So the top right-hand quadrant would then be the AAV-specific CD8 T-cell population, which has a frequency of about 0.22%. So it was also confirmed by using interferon gamma aliceport stimulated with AV capsite peptide alongside with this flow data using the pentamer. So here's the um, group in Takeda. Use ProPresent to identify aquaporin-4 peptides presented by liposome-loaded DCs. So in previous studies, it has shown that inducing immunotolerance to self-antigen AQP4 could 
represent new neuromyelitis optical treatment. So what the group in Takira, they, they have prepared the dendritic cells from the C57 black 6N mice loaded with liposome encapsulated AQP4 peptide position 201 to 220, which was then sent to ProImmune for analysis. In the table below, ProPresent has successfully identified AQP4 peptide antigen by immunoprecipitating of MHC class 2. In this case, the H2IAFB from the DCs. So the last study here is that it was done by a group in Bavaria Nordic developing human tumor anti-enhanced killing vaccine based on MVABN. The overexpression of HER2 and Mercury has been reported in different cancer types, making them attractive targets for cancer treatment. So the team in Bavaria Nordic infected human macrophages with take back her by, which stands for the um, tumor antibody enhanced killing, which is for take, and then back is vaccine, and her and by is the encoded her to end, as well as the Bakuri. And sent to ProImmune to analyze by ProPresent assay, and TDH derived peptides were identified by immunoprecipitating pan class 1 molecules, as shown in the table below. So from these case studies, it has clearly shown that ProPresent assay has consistent, consistently demonstrated its utility as a key tool in the process to efficiently characterize immune responses. It is important to note that this pro-present data is only one piece of the jigsaw puzzle in characterizing immune responses. The other piece of the jigsaw puzzle is by further validation of this peptide significance by using our ProMet T-cell proliferation assay and ProSpot T-cell Elispot assay, or by our Pro5 MHC class 1 pentamers and Pro T2 MHC class 2 tetramers. So having Access to a wide range of tools and technology is needed to ensure questions are answered appropriately, enabling correct decision making. Therefore, the ProImmune's breadth of experience and integrated platform of best in class assays allows you to save time, money, and reduce your overall project risk. So, you may find a list of molecules that we have assessed to date, such as therapeutic antibodies, bispecific antibodies, vaccines, therapeutic peptides, novel scaffold protein on drugs and um, enzyme replacement factors and many others. So I will end off here by leaving our contact details and feel free to contact us and our respective friendly team. We'll be more than happy to have a chat with you to explore areas that we can assist with your research potentially. And thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take uh, questions. Thank you, Edmund, very much. Uh, for all the case studies that Edmund just shared, uh, there are links in the chat box. Anyone with questions? <laughs> There were, um, there was one that popped up, but that's been addressed. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you, Edmund. Yep. Thanks. Oh, did I hear someone begin to ask Hello. a question? Yeah, just, I okay. have one question. But, yes. Uh, basically, uh, that question is uh, with respect to the previous question which was being asked regarding the concentrations or the dilutions. And uh, if I remember correctly, Jeremy was mentioning uh, they prefer or they are using 0.34 micromolar concentration. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, yes. I mean the yes, sorry, the, Jeremy, please. <laughs> I, I was just going to yeah, relate back to the DCT question. So that was in the context of uh, Dr. Lee's presentation for general protein therapeutics. Um, mm -hmm. It's a different perspective in the context of generic peptide type products, where the, the type of um, assessment that's being performed in the DCT is a little bit different. Um, and therefore, um, it is true that uh, in that context, if the data is being used in regards to rather than just a comparative antigenicity measure, um, then you do need to run these at the highest concentration that doesn't affect cell viability. So it's a slightly different perspective because actually the context of those is normally the generic peptide type molecules are run in a, um, a standard PBMC uh, T cell proliferation assay rather than a dendritic cell T cell assay. But in most cases, the DC T cell assays are normally run with whole proteins rather than specific peptides. So I don't know, Vishal, if that sort of addresses the maybe your, your question there. OK, so basically for the generic peptides, yeah. wherever we are doing comparative studies, you're saying we have to use the highest possible concentration, right? 
So basically, highest, this is yeah. The highest concentration doesn't affect that you can show doesn't affect cell viability. Okay, that's it. Okay. Yeah. So basically, our assay can be tweaked to accommodate whatever the non-cytotoxic concentration is. Yes. We can use that concentration, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. No problem. Thanks for the question.